Hello. I'm trying this game now, so I've never played it yet. Oh, difficulty. Story time, easy, normal. Um, sure, easy sounds fine. I know nothing about this game. I have not played it. I just know I like Obsidian from some other uh, Knights of the Old Republic and stuff, so. Five wagons groped blindly for the path on a starless night. Their master glancing ever upward to the skies for assurance that he is on the right course. A dim lantern, his only protection against the encroaching darkness. But the skies bring no comfort, shining no light, betraying no hint of what they know. The caravan carries travelers bound for the frontier hamlet of Gilded Vale, you among them, where a local lord has offered land and wealth to settlers from abroad looking for a fresh start. You have taken suddenly ill, sweating and shivering, and one of the other travelers signals for the caravan master to stop on your behalf. He pulls up just in time to avoid plowing into the trunk of a fallen tree that bars the way ahead. You will go no further tonight. Okay. I get to make my character or anything here? Hmm, here it is. Male or female? Male. Look at that guy. Beefcake. Human. A mua? Was he made out of a tree? Kith race and prowling near oceans. Affinity for water, many of their civilizations, such as Roltai, are based on naval dominance. Hmm. Dwarf. I get stuffed. Drywood, vanilla. Elf. Hmm. Orlin. Okay, now that thing looks like it's part tree. Godlike. What in the hell does he have on his head? Is he a unicorn? Orlan have resolve plus one might minus one and perception plus two. Amua might plus two. Dwarf. Might plus two, dexterity minus one, and... Oh, I like dwarves. Mountain dwarf or boreal dwarf? A tuniac share instinctive love of exploration boreal dwells are somewhat common in the vanilla valian republics but seldom encounter in the deer wood gain plus 15 accuracy against any creature of the wilder or primordial types mountain dwarves have a bonus to defend against poison and disease attacks that sounds like me Oh, look at all these choices. Maybe a barbarian. Paladin. The frick is a cipher. Ciphers have the ability to directly contact and manipulate another person's soul. That sounds strange. Monks. Oh, what the heck. Paladin. Faith and conviction have an inherent bonus to all the defenses. Over the course of the game, the value of their bonus may shift in their reputation. Dwarf. 
Dwarf Paladin. Am I playing World of Warcraft again? This is what I used to play when I started that game. Next. Paladin Order Bleak Walkers. Bleak Walkers are soldiers dedicated to conducting warfare mercilessly with extreme brutality in order to bring a swift end to conflicts because they are renowned for their terrible and unyielding nature. Most nobles will only call on them as a last resort. The Bleak Walkers' behavior reinforces cruelty because the quickest resolution to a battle is one in which the Bleak Walkers' arrival is announced and a surrender immediately follows. To ensure that people understand that no mercy will be given by any bleak walkers, they never give quarter under any circumstance. Yeah, that doesn't sound like a paladin. Drac Darkozy Paladins. The oldest known paladin order in the world, Darkozy Paladini, were founded as the guards of the Darkozy Palace in the Grand Valia over 2,000 years ago. Since the shattering of the Grand Valia, the Darkozy Paladini have transformed into the protectors and ambassadors of the immense Darkozy family as well as old Valian culture. The Darkozy Paladini are widespread and occasionally even come into conflict with other due to the machinations of the Darkozy family. Paladins of the Order are renowned for their wit and love of life. Favorite dispositions, passionate and clever don't like to be cruel and stoic. Gold Pack Knights. <laughs> the Gold Pack Knights are an order of mercenary paladins who sell themselves for all sorts of defensive and offensive engagements. They emerged on the Pearl Coast a few hundred years ago and managed to survive the destruction of the dwarven nation that created them. Gold Pack Knights are not especially brutal and are willing to shift direction based on the desire of their employers as their name suggests the cold pack knights believe payment forms a binding contract they are known for being non-judgmental professionals and impressively mirthless favorite disposition stoic and rational kind wayfarers the most widespread paladin order the kind wayfarers are guided and protectors for travelers often people of limited means traveling in dangerous areas Kind wayfarers lack the noble prestige of other paladin orders, but are widely respected by commoners for their generosity and compassion. Kind wayfarers lack a centralized structure, and many members operate independently in remote areas. Though the order is known for not being wealthy in recent years, they've improved their finances via cartography and working with groups like the Hand Occult to develop travel guides for little-known ports of Aeora. Favorite dispositions, benevolent and passionate. Shield Bearers of St. Elka During a peace negotiation, an archer from the kingdom of something Ader shot the noblewoman emissary of Kulkin, Elka, in the arm-provoking battle. Elka nevertheless made a second attempt at negotiations accompanied by three elven knights whose only arms were shields they held in front of Elka to protect her. Elka succeeded helping form the Aider Empire. The knights who protected her founded the Shield Bearers, who continued as eggs to guardians and diplomats and beyond. They are well known for their honesty and skill in negotiations. Favorite dispositions, honest and diplomatic. I like that one. Paladin abilities, flame of devotion. Calls upon the paladin's inner fire, causing the equipped weapon to burst into flame and adding burning damage to their next attack. Two per encounter, speed instant effects. Lay on hands. Healed solely by the belief, the paladin is able to heal with their touch of his or her hands are covering a substantial amount of endurance for the paladin or ally within range. Two per encounter, speed average, range 3 meters, allied target plus 54.9, endurance over 5 seconds. Oh, paladins always have to have lay on hands. 
Might. Might represents a character's physical and spiritual strength. Sure, thanks, tablet. Uh, physical and spiritual strength, brute force, as well as your ability to channel powerful magic. During interactions, it can be useful for intimidating displays and acts of brute force. In combat, it contributes to both damage and healing, as well as a fortitude defense. Recommended for Paladin. Well, what am I at? 12, and I have 15 points left to spend. Let's bump that up to at least 15. Constitution, definitely going to want to be in the same thing. Resolve reflects a character's internal drive, determination, and fearlessness, and the emotional intensity they can project to others. It can be useful for mental intimidation, leadership, and convincing. Let's get that up. Intellect represents a character's logic and reasoning capabilities. Seems pretty standard. Right, that looks all right. Culture, oh my lord. This has got some deep, deep customizations. Why have I not played this game yet? Aider. The Aider Empire is currently the largest and most powerful force in this part of the world that is centered around the equator and has a tropical climate. All of the Empire's colonies in numerous areas of the world. Greater Aider is at its heart and houses the majority of its human and elven nations. Deadfire Archipelago. Consisting of the nations of Nastica. Hundreds. Hey, look, we got somebody in here. Do, do, do. Uh, dozens of Amoa settlements and hundreds of lawless pirate infested islands that stretch along the southern sea. Deadfire is home to boreal dwarves, Amoa, and mixed variety of other races. Deadfire Archipelago is the last stop for any one headed east. A multitude of monstrous sea creatures infest the ocean. Beyond making travel virtually impossible. Probably not really. Located in the northeast of Eyer Glenfath, the Examital Plains are a large expanse of fertile savannas that are extensively farmed by humans and Orland residents. The Examital culture is one of the oldest in the world though one of the least imperialistic having spread out little over the last several thousand years. <laughs> well, that's plains, I'm a mountain dwarf, so probably not there. Once the crown jewel of the southern seas, Old Valia is now the crumbled remnant of the empire of warring merchant nations. Counting many humans and dwarves among the ranks, the old Valian countries are still forces to be reckoned with and are proud of their rich and cultural heritage. Rotai. Dominated by the Amoa nation of Rotai, the gulf itself is a host to a number of nations, most of them Amoa, Orland, and Dwarven. Though these countries are relatively young, they are some of the most advanced colonial settlements in the east. The Gulf is a land of riches and resources for those who can take them, though the entire coast is often pummeled by violent storms. <laughs> the Living Lands The Living Lands is the mountainous region of a large northern island renowned for its diversity of plant and animal life. Its weather is unpredictable and its ecosystem vary dramatically from valley to valley. The living lands are home to an assortment of races and a variety of colonial and independent settlements. The White Winds. The White That Winds. Large, cracked southern expanse of polar ice. The White That Winds is home of pale elves and small colonies of daring explorers, outcasts, and adventurers. While virtually no plant life grows in the white, it is home to many hardy species of dangerous animals that forage from the sea to prey upon each other to survive. I think Old Valia sounded the most logical to me. 
background. Holy cow. Um, I'm going to read through these all. We'll be here all day. Do, do, do. Artist, dissident, hunter, mercenary. Aristocrat will work. Oh, and I gotta pick my appearance. Yeah, should we go with something like maybe a little bluer? Yeah, I like that. Secondary with a bit of purple in there. That's more like grape, isn't it? I kind of like that with that skin. Yeah, let's go there. Hair. Oh, I'm usually a white haired dwarf. Let's see what kind of beards we got. Bigger the better. Longer, bushier. More are neat too. Yeah, it works. There we go. Hair. No. 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 Cornrows. Braids. There we go. Change the portrait maybe if that's one that matches a little better. That's all elves. Why is it giving me elves? Um, 99 portraits and 5 are dwarves? <laughs> Holy crap. Why is it showing me all the non-dwarf portraits? What's the point in that? Those definitely don't look like me. Be weird if I picked one that was totally wrong. I guess this will have to do. What do we got next? Voice. Oh, different voices. Yeah. Leading the way. There we go. Noble. Oh my lord. All right, enter name. Sorry if you can hear that, I have a mechanical keyboard. Now this was my World of Warcraft Dwarven Paladin name, so why the heck not? All right, I think we're done and ready to start playing. Let's get into this. New quest, the Gilded Veil. Journey to the Gilded Veil. The caravan masters finishes addressing the group, his bushy red mustache and sagging jowls quivering as if for emphasis. Everybody stays close to the wagons, got it? Stay out of the woods, and beasts take you if you were planning a stroll through those ruins up there. Okay. Whole area is crawling with hut dwelling types who would be happy to stick an axe in you for trespassing. So mind that you don't track mud on their sacred blazing rocks. Okay, will do. Tonight everybody stays put, and in the morning we'll get the path cleared. Gilded veils less than a day out. Understood? At last, the caravan master turns to you, frowning as he looks you over. Touch of the rumbling rot, could be. There's a stinging beetle round here, carries it. You'll be fine once it passes your innards, unless you don't drink water, of course, in which case you'll be dead in a day. I'll be dead in a day if I don't drink water? There's a berry grows in these parts, small and pink, called a spring berry, about the size of a fingernail. Give you cramps if you eat it, but the frontiersmen make a tea from it. Calms the insides. 
Should get you through the night. You might check around, see if you can find some. Meanwhile, I'll see if we can scare you up some water. Sure, thanks. I know you want to hunt before it gets much darker. Let's see about refilling our water first. Got a sick one here. He nods in your direction. Sparfell nods and slides a worn bow over his shoulder. They grow on a bush that's common around here. Kind of funny looking. You'll know it when you see it. Doubt you'd have to go far off the road to find one. Nothing you won't see on half the hills of Air Glonfoth. Money to be made selling their knickknacks in Defiance Bay if you don't mind getting stuck with Glonfoth and arrows now and again. They didn't build them, but I'll be the effigy if they don't watch them like a mother bear. Of course, all the ones Good around here know. have been ransacked ten times over. Got nothing left worth half a pawn, so I hear. Got different names for them. Settlers called them Ingwithans. Nobody that liked them enough to stop them becoming ruins tell you that much. Good to know. Is not it dangerous out here? Business, and not if the weather holds up. All right, well, that's enough. Hold on. Take someone with you. I know you're not some helpless tenderfoot, not like most of this lot. But you drop dead, I don't want to be looking for the body. Got a schedule to keep. keep. Okay. Who do you want me to take with you? Kalisha. Kalisha! He needs to find some spring berries. Watch that he doesn't drop dead. Thanks. No promises. What kind Human. of guide says something like that? Kind you can afford. Don't listen to her. You're in good hands. And I pay too well, if anything. Off with you. Hayden should have supplies. See that you're equipped before you head out. We're in harsh country. Get your berries and hurry back. And if you get so much as a tickle of wind, you drop everything and you run. Something in the air tonight. If it's a Beowick, we'll shelter in the ruins. Hut dwellers be damned. Beowick? You heard the man. Let's get going before you keel over. Okay. Who was this guy I was supposed to see about for? This is your first visit to the world of ARA. You may want to watch these windows become familiar with the tools and interfaces available to you. Your party always consists of your character and up to five additional companions and adventures while the caravan is camped outside the Glanfath and Ruins. Odama has signed Calicia to help you. Calicia is a fighter, a class that excels at close quarters defense. Use her abilities to complement your own. To select a party member, click on their selection portrait and press the number button that corresponds to the position in the party, starting with one at the left to select multiple party members. Click and hold anywhere on the screen and drag the marquee over the circles of the party members you'd like to include. Okay, that's a lot of... And... Who was this guy I was supposed to see? Caravaner, 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 caravaner. Indeed. Elden. Anyone need supply? Brought a whole wagon full of goods to sell, but not enough shirts for the road. Say, is there anything you need? I've got some basic traveling supplies for sale if you'd like to take a look. See what you got. What do I have? Cloak of the Obsidian Order, Tiny Obsidian Worm. You got a pet? Golem's Pledge? Giant Miniature Space Piglet. What in the hell is a giant minute? That makes no sense. Party stash. No, I'm not using the stash. Party. Um. Retrain character. Inventory character. What do I have for equipment right now? Do I have anything? Does it show me? Inventory. I have a breastplate. I have a rapier and a small shield. I guess I could put this. Oh, 
this again over there. Put this ring on somewhere. Pet. Giant miniature space piglet. Oops. Something else you need? What does he got? Weapons. Pet or I've only got a hundred gold. Or copper, I guess. I'm sure I'm fine. Armor, cloaks, potion of minor regeneration. Don't even have enough for that. Lock pick. I'm a paladin. I'm gonna be lock picking anything anytime soon. I'm sure I'm fine. I'm not going that way. Let's go down over here. Exploration is key in Pillars of Eternity. You make your way through the eastern reach. Open the area map to see what parts of the map you've already been to and see what's left to explore. And what's this thing? Party AI is active. Uh, okay. I'll have your water soon enough. Stream's not going anywhere. Okay. Thank you. Is this the thing I need? Let's check by those outcroppings. Uh-oh. Combat use a possible real-time strategy system because you'll often manage more than one character at a time. It's a good idea to pause the game, issue orders, and resume real-time to see the orders play out. The option menu also contains many choices for automatic pausing when certain conditions are met. For example, start up combat. Mm -hmm. Well, you go attack and mm -hmm. you go attack. Mm -hmm. One of your characters will begin engaged in melee. When these characters are engaged, they immediately stop moving. If they move again, they will provoke a disengagement attack from the enemies. Engaging them. Your character also automatically engage enemies when they initiate attacks against them with melee weapons. All characters in game have friend and foe, primary defense against attacks, defection, fortitude, reflex cells, faculty is very good. Kill it! Kill it with fire! Sometimes a weapon or spell simply isn't well suited to pretend to get reduction. When the attack hits, the deer will all wipe out all its percentage. Okay. You scored a crit. A crit is better than a result. Yeah, I know what a crit is. I don't need to read all this. I shall. This is it. There we go. You receive quest journal update with relevant information. You're the one who's supposed to be for some big shot noble family. That true? My family has some clout. Yeah, how is it that happened to come here? Is it your business? I'm ashamed of my family. That sounds like one. Well, we've all got things we'd like to leave behind. God knows I do. I'll tell you that. Here's hoping they never track us down. Sure. Freeze in her shrouding. Been a long time since I've been this way, but I always did like it. Lord Raedric's offer makes a girl think. I'll give him that. You here to settle like the rest of the lot? Hadn't given it much thought. No harm in that. Might as well see the place first. You must have some other plan in mind for coming this way.
I have no idea. Right, interesting. Well, there's probably no hurry to take up your mind. You've got an inn in Gilded Vale that'll put you up as long as you need, or my sisters tell me. Anyway, I'm wasting time here. Odom will give me an earful. Let's be on our way. Alright, I don't want to check. No, I wouldn't hold my breath that Sparfell's getting your water anytime soon. He does what he feels like when he feels like it. We should check up on him and slap him around a little. Stream's just down the way. Let's come in and get your water. Sure. Find Sparfell. Dingle dangle. Indeed. Come on, lady. You're supposed to be coming my way. I'm guessing we go this way. This is where that douchebag was standing before. Sparfell. It's probably getting slapped around by something. And we'll have to rescue him. Because, you know. Usually how these games go, right? Look, there's a deer. There's the stream. I'm guessing you can go this way. Rocky, do I have to cross the bridge? What a surprise. Sparful went hunt. You crouch at the riverbank, dip your water skin in school water while Calisico waits nearby, keeping watch. As you raise, you notice her look up sharply towards the tree line. You've added a gained an item, full water skin. Out of the trees emerges Sparfell, one of the guides barely discernible in the dim moonlight. He no longer carries his bow and there's a strangeness to his gait. His stride wobbly as he moves towards you with labored breath. Sparfell, are you alright? Are you alright? Toe catches a rock and he collapses forward in a heap. The feathered shaft of an arrow planted between his shoulders like an enemy flag. Uh oh. You see those glam farthen things? Ambush! Uh oh. A moment respite. Where? Mm -hmm. uh, let me take him. Second win. Lay on hands. You go. That guy. What you need? You go hit her. Look! <laughs> <laughs> Kill it! Kill him! Kill him with fire! Come on, we have to get back to camp. Hmm? I'm here. I'm here. Yes? I loot him? Yes? No, well, whatever. Hmm? I'm here. No, that's not the way to go. We want to go back up here. Hey, you got two viewers. Hello, how are you? Another one. Better beat its head in. Injured. Hit him. Hit him with your sword. Start him on fire. Oh, 
Uh oh. Does it look like they killed the whole camp? Glain Fathen Leader. All around you lie the massacred remains of the other travelers, peppered with arrows and knife hilts, splayed and bug eyed and filthy. Kiloska put the back of her left hand on her mouth as if to ward away some poisonous vapors. A handful of dark figures stands above the fallen, treading on limbs and backs and heads, jerking their axes from bodies as if from half-split logs. One of them, towering and severe, with a thick beard tasseled with knots, holds a wet blade at the neck of the man you recognize as hailed in the last year caravan left standing. I thought that was this guy here, dead. Lay down your arms, trespasser. Do not forfeit, forfeit this man's life for a fight you will lose. The ruin has not been sullied by our hands, men of Ergalfum. Your words would carry no weight when you have seen the truth with my own eyes. Blood must be paid for this intrusion. You have one rank and a disposition reputation. These reputations represent how people perceive your personality throughout the world. Even seemingly nasty reputations will be favored by some people. And benign reputations often bring out the worst in certain people. No disposition is inherently good or bad in Pillars of Eternity, but your main character is a priest or paladin. You must be careful not to misalign their dispositions with what is favored by their deity in order. Respectively, for the main character only, the dispositions will modify the effects of holy radiance for priests and faith and conviction for paladins. Very interesting. So I say again, lay down your arms. Well, hello. We've got three people watching now. Don't trust them. They mean to kill us all. Uh, we are innocent in this. Will you not listen to reason? Might 14. Only a fool attacks a weak enemy while a stronger one yet lives. You can kill him, but you might as well be killing yourself. Judging by the string of animal teeth around your neck, I am guessing you are worshippers of Galloween. Galloween told you to stop protecting the ruins, would you? Put down your weapon. I swing his axe, head and winces, but the blow never comes. Instead, the man cocks his head, intrigued. Of course, but he would not. It is by the command of all the gods that we accept this charge. How do you know? Because it's inconsistent with their beliefs, or because it's what you were told? It's always been known to my people. And I see, what if Galloway's edict that weakness and age must be purged by youth and strength? You think Galloway would want some moldy, crumbling stones to survive long after their builders have turned to dust? He would not. He told us otherwise. I'm sure he did. Just not you personally. But why would that stop you from killing innocents? Distracted, the man's grip falters on his axe handle. He nearly fumbles at affording hate at the moment he needs to dodge out of his swing, which comes too late. Howling with rage, the man charges you instead. I'll take that. Yes? You go after the leader. How can I help? Aiden, go after the hunter. Hmm? You can come after the leader with me. Hmm? Your enemy lies supine on the ground, unable to rise, his companions now silent among the other dead. His breath comes in wheezing fitful gasps. He looks not at you, but at the sky above you. Forgive us. Barely audible beneath his choked sigh, a whisper of wind stirs the air. At this, the man's eye rolls back as he closes them. Good, good, the gods are just a queer... The gods are just. A queer smile crosses his face. I am ready. The wind begins to swell, whipping the ground around the camp. Electric and volatile, upending pots and rattling tents like an angry spirit. 
You can feel it begin to seep beneath your skin, and where it pierces you, it feels as though it's rending you apart from within. Seated against the wagon wheel amidst the howling maelstrom, slashed across his chest and bowel, Odama's body stirs, and with great effort, he raises his sagging head. His eyes barely open. He looks directly Get at inside. you. Get inside! Run! Get inside! Run! It's probably that Beowack thing he was talking about. It's quite the storm looking. It's a pretty pretty game. Straining against a gale that threatens to pull you off your feet with every step, you set your hands in the warm folds of the weathered rock and set up about pulling yourself up the precipice. The last burst of energy before your arms give out, you swing yourself up onto the ledge. Hailed in trails behind you, slowed by injury and delayed by early hesitation. As he nears the face of the rocks, one of the fallen attackers who had been feigning death lunges for Hado and topples him onto the rocky ground. Restrained, Hado lashes out against his fatigued assailant but struggles to break his hold. They are close to you, despite the wind from your position. If you were to throw your weapon at the attacker, you would have a good chance at hitting your mark. Curve. Your aim is true and you hit Yars held and loose. Oh, they hit Jars held and loose. Lurching to his feet, held in clambers up the base of the rock. As he nears the top, however, the wind flares pulling him sideways and tearing one of his hands free. But diving out onto the raw rock, you manage to clutch hold of it, securing his other hand, you pull out with waning strength and it feels as though your arms will be jerked from their sockets. They hold just long enough for Hayoden to set his feet and join you on the trembling ledge. There is a deep resonance to the swelling wind now. You feel it in the rocks beneath your feet inside the cavity of your own chest and as though it would shake the marrow from your bones. Each new gust menaces the old stones before your losing connection means. Before you, loosening connections, unsettling balances. As you dart beneath the old archway, the entire portal begins to fall beneath its own weight. Was that a Beowick? Had to be. Then we're lucky to be alive. And we're the only ones. We can't stay here. There could be another collapse. We're not getting out that way anyway. Let's get further inside. I'm here. I probably have no weapon now. I shall. You can switch to new weapon sets by selecting a weapon icon from the individual act character's action bars. off by rubble. Yes? Mm. That should be far enough. <sighs> but what now? We look for another way out. Storm has to die sometime. Windstorm of a kind they only get in Eirgalfan. Glanfath. Not too many people live through them, so it's hard to know what's true. The Glanfathan word is Beowak. To them, it's the god's way of reaping the souls of the land that couldn't find their own way out. But they'll take a living soul as soon as a dead one. Still got yours? Who attacked us? The Glanfathans. Those would be the hut dwellers Odama warned you about. Look to be fangs of Galloween. Who are the twitchiest of the lot. They go rune to rune looking for fights with colonists. Poor Odama. I think he half expected this once we lost the main road. 
They said we trespassed on the runes. I don't believe that. Odamon would never allow it. But as much as the fangs are hotheads, Clan Fathans don't attack without being provoked. Either they saw something and got the wrong idea, or... She glances down the passage beyond. Or there's looters in here with us. That's not something we need right now. What about everybody else? The wheels got a hold of them now. Gods grant them better luck in their next lives. You don't seem too upset. Maybe you just don't know me enough to know what upset looks like, and maybe I've seen worse, too. Seen worse and kept on walking because there's nothing else to be done and because there's other people you care about who still need you. Let's get going. Which way to go here? One way's as good as the other, right? It's not like I'm Gandalf and I have someone else has been here. Place. We should move. see if they left anything useful behind. Camping supplies. You can use them to rest in the wilderness or dungeons to fully restore your character's abilities, health easily. Easy difficulty allows you to carry more camping supplies, but hard restricts them so severely. And if you fully run out of camping supplies, try to find an inn. Shield, and a torch. Torch is handy. Anything else around here? Let's go to inventory. Give me the mace. Let's see what I have in my channels. A torch. And an axe and a torch. He's got two daggers, three daggers. That was a dead end, so we go the other way. See us down here. Whatever the that kobold, a trembling, sickly creature, emerges from the dark, clutching a spear. Knobby elbows and thin ribs show that it's scaly flesh, which recognize it as a Zarip. Watches you cautiously, breathing in ragged sighs. Cocks at hand poaches you a soft clicking sound, emanating from the back of its throat. Zooms its defensive posture. Indeed. Yes? We'll go this way then. Eastern Reach is a dangerous place full of lurking enemies and scaly... Oh, sorry. And carefully concealed secrets enable scouting mode to move stealthily and search for hidden objects like traps or secret doors. Where is that? Look at the tiles. What are those symbols? Hmm? Winding strike. Be quiet. Worth a look. Trap detected. Good to know. It's 
guess we're not going that way. Yes? Stay quiet. Party. I shall. Should we not see what's in here? Six pillars. mural must be ancient yet the colors are still bright and vivid it shows what a procession of egg withens with all the kith races oma well blah 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 they walk among pillars similar to the ones that are in this chamber each one topped with a flame The line symbol is inscribed on this pillar, an unlit brazier sits at its base. It could be lit if you had the means. Use your torch. Should we go see if that changed anything over here? Easy now. Hmm? Found something. shall see where this leads spider that easy. They'll never know I'm here. Attack! Oh, looks like it's maybe over here. over here. Oh, did I miss stuff back here? Let's see what's back here. I could scout ahead, see what's around the corner. How can I help?
see anything worth fighting for. I mean, kill the thing for experience, but not all games reward you for just constantly getting into combat with everybody. Yes? Nothing that way. Is there anything this way? What's this? That's as large as chickens are strung to a web. Yeah, we don't need to see that. What's out here? Did we get through the cave? Oh. What the fuck is that? Older robed man. Four figures stand before an otherworldly apparatus. An ancient structure of chiseled adra and metallic veins, ominous and looming. Like a silent observer, standing motionless in their midst as what appears to be a human body, colorless as stone or ash, the other figure gaze upon it. It might be contemplation. From your vantage point, you are well observed from their view. The figure closest to the machine stands out among them. A thick gray beard frames his face, otherwise hidden by a metallic mask. His faded robes are embroidered with a large runic language unlike anything you've ever seen, and he wears a strange black headdress with two protrusions that jut out like the wings of a, some malevolent creature. Both binder bear witness, and see this man has kept his word true to his last breath, full to his blood's last drop. Guide his soul, queen that was, and regard it among your favor. Let his life by the key be his confession. Let his death by the key be his absolution. May he walk the world ever free of the crushing weight of the book. Your brother has done his part, and you have seen the power of his contribution. I will accept no further hesitation from the rest of you. In the sight of the queen that was, will you fulfill the oath? Will you take your place beside your brother? In the endless esteem of her memory that is without flaw, step forth and be assured of the great worth of your life's course. It's always good magic when you're sacrificing people to do something, right? For an instant, the apparatus goes quiet and the air is still. Then all at once it erupts with a concussive surge. Light floods your vision and you are knocked to the ground. Your head snaps back as you land and pain wells into the back of your skull, washing your last thoughts away into the black, unconscious void. You open your eyes to a different place, another time. You stand in a circular room, grand and domed, its walls lined with adra and trimmed with copper. The style is ancient, but the chamber is unwreathed. At the far end, a great pillar of adra pierces the floor from below, its shimmering texture giving the illusion of boundless depth, encircling the pillars and apparatus much like the one you've just seen, but immense and multifaceted and intertwined. Your thoughts are yours and not yours, and they seem to exist before you think them, and they are all questions. Pressing questions. Troubling questions. Questions that must be answered, or... or... At the base of the pillar, you now see a man with a thick gray beard and a ceremonial robe. Crowned with a strange ornamental headdress... You know this man. You are walking towards him now at a pace that is hurried while trying not to appear so. You have something you want to ask him. One question above all, and the question spins madly in your mind. You awaken to find your malaise has broken, only to be replaced with something far more concerning. Faint whispers are audible at the edge of your hearing, like a ringing in your ears that does not subside. 
moment flits through your periphery and then when you turn to look you can see no signs of whatever it was you find your gaze regularly darting this way and that an involuntary paranoid tick if this is a sickness it may be dangerous to go without treatment for long the figures at the machine stand frozen in place flesh and blood replaced by cinders and ash the man who led them is nowhere to be seen <coughs> sorry one of your characters has become fatigued Fatigue represents the physical and psychological wear and tear of demanding activity on a character. It is most re commonly received as an injury when a character is knocked out, but some scripted interactions will also result in fatigue if they are especially grueling. Fatigue goes through multiple stages, initially inflicting minor penalties but growing in severity over time. Resting is the easiest way to remove the effects of fatigue, though some consumables can also remove fatigue. Hyoden and Kaliska lie bloody on the uneven cobbles, their bodies twisted unnaturally in death. You are alone and far from help. Gilded Fail may be your best hope of receiving treatments before things get worse. Your characters earned enough experience to advance at level. Click an icon on their portrait to level them up. Six points. Lore, Athletics, Survival, Talents. Untroubled faith. The paladin's belief become more than just some of his or her actions. Negating reputations that negatively influence faith and conviction. Modifies faith and conviction. Passive. Dex plus four both deflection plus eight all defense except for deflection. Deep faith. The intensity of the paladin faith granting increased defense bonuses. Modifies faith and conviction. Plus four deflection and plus eight. Plus four and plus eight. Plus four and plus eight. Shielding touch. Weapon focus, not there yet. Hold the line, utility. Knight trains the character in the use of battle axe, sword, morning star, and crossbow, gaining accuracy with all weapons of those types. Adventurer, pole axe, warm I don't know if I want to. Great sword, pike, noble, the dagger, rapier, mace, scepter, and rod. Now we'll stick with the untroubled faith. I think that's all done. We don't need two picks. That year is probably handy. Oh, it's giving me both. Oh. Uh, 
Cadillacs, maintenance, 13 to 18. Damage reduction, bonus crit damage. Dagger. Didn't she have a sword? No, she had a mace. Um, do I want to go over near whatever the fuck that was? Probably not. You must gather your party before venturing forth. to gild the veil, right? I guess that's what I gotta do. I'm gonna try to make it through the woods all by myself now. Wait, was that just a ghost? the veil. <clears throat> well, whoever you are that's hanging around and watching me, thank you. That's kind of creepy. It's a whole tree full of dead bodies. Why would you do that? You must be one of the new settlers. Welcome to Gilded Vale. You'll be pleased to know that we've had some recent vacancies here. Of course, we'll need to make some inquiries first. The inestimable Lord Radric VII has taken great pains to insulate our town from Widewind's legacy. Have you ever sired a hollowborn child? An infant born without a soul, of course. Lord Radric has made it his first priority to eliminate this How scourge from our born village. Without a soul? I should warn you, stranger. Here in Gilded Vale, we have a special place for dissidents, charlatans, 
and those who would hide a curse in our midst. His lordship's wife is with child and due any day now. Without his approval, I shan't be able to find you a permanent settlement. It will have to wait until after the birth. We can continue our interview then, after the bell tolls from Radric's hold to signal my lord's new heir. In the meantime, you can find temporary accommodations at the inn just southwest of here. Whatever your problem, it sounds like a matter for an animancer. However, the only animancer in Gilded Vale isn't in any condition to speak. Consider yourself fortunate. After she failed Lord Radric, we saw to it that she wouldn't profit from the misplaced trust of others. A bad cure is often worse than none at all. So this is a really shitty town, basically, is what you're telling me. But if you're set on finding a bottle of troll piss or a dead Audra pebble to rub on your forehead, you're welcome to check her pockets. A little corpse stink is nothing when you're digging for shit. My advice, however, is to be satisfied that you escaped and leave it at that. Right. Keep out of... Um, talk to you. Listen! Two tolls. Let that be the last. Three. Gods have mercy. It seems your arrival is ill-timed. Three bells toll only for the death of a Radric. I fear Lord Radric's heir is lost, or else Hollowborn, and so lost all the same. You should tread carefully. Circum Nice guy. Definitely not poking around in the dead body in the tree. Where's this inn? That looks like a blacksmith. That just looks like a random house. Uh, that's a windmill. It's definitely not sleeping in the windmill. Probably the end. This looks like it might be an end. Just a farm. Indeed. Where's the inn?
Oh, here we go. Ulfra's house, windmill, Ingrid's house, blacksmith hammery, road south, temple of Elthas, the black and hound inn. There we go. You see four people gathered at the door to me and they raised voices and chopping gestures suggest an argument, argument reaching its climax. The first figure raises his hand for calm. His face is partially obscured by a hood, but his height and stature suggest an I meant no offense. Let's put this matter to rest over a round, shall we? My treat. Hoping to soothe our pride with a few Adira coppers, eh? We don't need your coin. Angry Townsman. One of the other men glares at the hooded elf. His eyes are red from drink, but his gaze is focused. You've got a lot of gall mocking us in our own village. We don't take ill treatment from foreigners, especially not Adirans. Go on. Say it again. I'm itching for an excuse. Fy, you're itching for the kindling touch of your sister, you cocksmither! <laughs> I'll cut that barrel-looking tongue out of your head. Okay. This is a misunderstanding. I didn't say whatever it is you think I said. We've nigh quarrel. That's where you're wrong. Don't want your charity either. Sounds suspiciously like you're defending him. Well, of course it's going to result in a fight. Onward! Bunch of drunk dummies. Not quite how I hope to get to know the neighbors. Thank you for your timely assistance with that awkward situation. Courtesy is a rare pleasure in these parts. Though your accent suggests that you are no more mm, local than I. He straightens his hood and you note know, the remains of fraying embroidery on his gloves. His boots are caked with the dirt of many months' travel, but the leatherwork beneath it is sturdy well, and fine. I suppose fine. introductions are in order after that little fiasco. Alof Corvuser, at your service. Well, I'm a wizard by training, and an adventurer by necessity. I was born in the Seathwood, part of the mainland of the Adir Empire. And both of my parents served the nobility, which afforded me an education, for which I am grateful. grateful. However, there were no open positions in those houses, and so I decided to seek new means in a new land. And how exactly did you come to be here? In Gwythan ruins? Well, those can be dangerous places during the best of times, which these are not. And half the locals would arrest you for trespassing, and the rest would kill you outright. I'm curious, what exactly did you find there? And you survived? I've heard such a thing was impossible. Well, it seems you either have a knack for timing or the favor of the gods. An excellent question. I came looking for fresh air and cheap land. Instead, the magistrate gave me directions to the inn and a story about the local lord's expectant wife. But I take it that's a familiar tale. Indeed. The local lord has searched far and wide for similar specialists. He has rid himself of them almost as desperately. His dare, darting glance takes in the tumble-down building and the fallow, rock-strewn fields. 
I expect that such expertise would be sought somewhere else. Begging your pardon, but neither do you. Yet, circumstances can find a person in the strangest of places. I'm afraid that was a matter of misunderstandings and mistranslations. It doesn't help that people in these parts remember their war with Adir like it was yesterday. It was a great deal and they misheard me. It happens all too easily after a few pints and their accent doesn't help. As should I, given recent events. It's just as well. I've had enough of the watered wine and lumpy beds at the inn. They say even the owner tired of the place. Just up and left one day. It explains quite a lot about the upkeep. Perhaps I could join you. I could use a change of scenery, and I find it's better to travel in numbers. Excellent. I shall follow, follow you. you. Yay. Dagger, let's take the coins. Cause a bunch of, I don't care about that other crap. Go in the inn. Well met, friend. Please sit where you like. Would you like a drink or a room? We have two available at the moment. I'm afraid we can't offer much of a good meal today. Unless you're a fan of cold porridge. Inns allow characters to rest without using camping supplies. Chip rooms are usually available, but if you have copper to spend, you may consider the more expensive options. The bonuses they provide last for a long time and affect the entire party. I'm not going to use all my copper. I'm going to have scary dreams. Your sleep is restless and fevered, assaulted by hisses and whispers, blanketed with a suffocating anxiety. You open your eyes to awaken and find yourself in front of gilded veils and gallows trees, the creaking of its ropes growling louder in your mind until the sound is deafening. Hanging from the tree is an old dwarf woman whose face is shriveled inward like molding fruit. Moldering fruit. Her head bang, hangs limply to one side. As you look at her, she looms larger and larger in your mind until she is mere inches from your face. Suddenly, her head snaps up and her eyes open and they are empty and behind them is a vast nothingness that makes your stomach drop. Her mouth slowly parts and a gust of rancid air speaks a word. Watch her. You jolt awake. Sorry. You jolt awake, the foul smell of the dwarf woman's breath still permeating your nostrils. Sweat runs down your face in thick droplets and your skin is soaked from head to toe. You remember the woman. You remember seeing her decaying face when you spoke with the magistrate. He called her an animancer. Though it fills you with new, queasy apprehension, you feel a strange compulsion to see this woman once more, if only to confirm she is truly dead. That's good. Looks like that resolved most of my crap. He's got his spell book. Leather armor, hood, cloak. And a rapier. <laughs> Let's go find that tree.
A squat, distended body of an elderly dwarf woman daggles from a thin, crooked bow that sags at the tug of her noose. The bloated purple flesh of her neck, worn away in patches like moth-eaten linen, bulges over the rope that suspends her, and her lifeless head lulls forward rigidly from one side to the other when the breeze shifts. You perceive a faint glow around her that casts no light on its surroundings, but there is a tepid warmth to it, and you feel somehow that you could reach out and touch it. Not with your hands, but with some aspect of yourself that is no worldly dimension. You take a deep breath, clearing your mind, focusing on your objective. As you exhale, you feel yourself spreading out toward the woman, perceiving all that lies between you and her with new, unfamiliar awareness. Once you've expanded enough to reach her, there is a sudden jolt to your mind, a ringing electric surge of images and words and sounds. Involuntarily, you shut your eyes and feel yourself being pulled down to some deeper, deeper consciousness in space occupied only by you and the hanging woman. And when you open them again, she is staring at you with eyes clouded in a milky fog. Her body, still swaying in a wind you no longer feel from a tree that stands planted in a misty void. The woman gives a slow nod of her head, the rope creaking as she does so, and she smiles at you. Have you come here for me, dear? Or have you gotten lost? Ah, uh, it is both, I think. Yes? Is that what we're doing? Perhaps it just seems that way. Perhaps it is the easiest way for your mind to make sense of it. I think it is a very good choice. Did you now, dear? My, that would be something, wouldn't it? Could be luck, could certainly be. A storm can be a careless thing. Or maybe it got its hands around your soul, but couldn't pick it up. A soul can be heavy if it stayed in one piece through its time. Strong souls, we call them in the trade. Cold, I mean. Cold them. Those days are all behind me, no? The world looks a little different than it used to, is that it? Feels like you're noticing things for the first time that have always been there. You have seen past the shroud. It only takes an instant. Your soul remembers, yes? Remembers how it sees when it leaves the body, like being reminded of a dream you had forgotten. You are a watcher now, and a watcher you will stay. What indeed? Long hours have many animancers spent studying such things. Not I, though. Not I. I'll tell you what I know, though, since fair is fair. And here we are, visiting you and I, and it reminds me of better times. Souls pass on. Some say through Audra stones, which are the blood veins of the world. They leave the world for a time and are reborn into it, sometimes more than they were before, but usually less and seldom the same. For all souls, there is a time where they do not live, yet have not passed on, and those souls roam the world, same as you or I, either leaving or lost. But no one sees them because they have forgotten how. A watcher sees, though, knows what to look for. And sometimes they know a person just by looking at them. Know where they've been in ages past when their bodies were other bodies. See memories even their honor can't recall. A wonder to behold when all goes well. A wonder! Oh, nothing to be afraid of, I'm sure. It's just much to take in for some. Sometimes there's trouble sleeping or other difficulties. Hmm. 
you should see old Meerwald. He could tell you much more than I. A watcher just like you. Helped many in his day. Took up in an old keep no one would claim. Not far, not far. Kanua, beyond the Black Meadow. He will welcome the company. Oh, yes. Entropy. Rima Gan's work. We know little of why or how. We lose pieces of ourselves when we die and pick up pieces of others when we are born again. But less than what we lost. We try to stop it with the animantic sciences, but with little success. A very small few resist Rimargan's influence and stay together through some force of defiance, at least for a time. But they all succumb eventually, I think. Me? <laughs> I'll bore you to tears, though. Goodbye, my dear. It was lovely visiting. Crucible of the Soul. Only that they are rare and that they seem to have a unique insight into certain soul conditions, just as you demonstrated. Seventeen and a half. Sure, whatever you said, Dingleberry. Is it the blacksmith? Hello, second person. This Amawa man has an impressive build, towering above the countertop. His skin is the dusky blue of the deeper oceans, and his thick arms boast corded muscles. Small ears frame a square jaw, face coated in smeared soot and arcing black tattoos. The first new face I've seen in quite some time. What can I do for you? Right, the stock's not what it used to be. We find weapons and armor at RVA, all forged right here at the Black Hammer. We just don't have the supplies. Been expecting the next delivery for near on a week now and haven't seen a sign of it. Have to expect they were hit by the bandits. The road out east is crawling with them, or my workers ran off with the wagon themselves, maybe to make some coin, as if that lot would dare. He's right about the bandits. The dire situations in villages like this and the exodus to the cities has created far too many opportunities for unscrupulous sorts. Tautanu scratches his jaw thinking, if you happen to be headed that way, maybe you could keep an eye out for a supply wagon, or my shipment at least. They'd be cutting through the Black Meadow, I expect. Only good road for it. And as it's most of your weapons to go, most of our weapons to go to His Grace Lord Raedric, Tautanu glances at the nearby guard, and, and that's as it should be. But it doesn't leave much for outsiders. We just don't have the iron. And you have my thanks. You bring those supplies back, and I'll have plenty more to offer you. A discount to start. Oh, and if you find my workers, tell them to hurry up, and they can take it farming instead. Strange. Well met, friend. Let me see what you got. Uh, 
Oh, those are uh, not cheap. Sell stuff. Where we go? Probably hang on to the lock picks for now. Rope and grappling hook. 113 copper pieces. I don't really need the sword, do I? Rope and grappling hook probably gonna come in more handy. Favors a little more damage, but Where's this place he said? Eastern Wood. Kid Noah's where I'm supposed to go meet that person. I guess I travel up to the Eastern Wood. Now before we travel, we'll just stop here. Save the game. And I think we'll call that a night. It's been like an hour and 40. Thank you. Have a great night, guys. <laughs>